before I talk to you about the energy sector and where I think that we find uh, business opportunities in the future, a uh, small confession. I don't represent the paper and pulp industry, I represent myself and my company. And the reason is I believe in the fact that there is a connection between carbon dioxide and climate change. And not uh, all of us in the industry do that. And I'm sure you have a dividing opinion about that uh, in this fora as well. Uh, but I do believe in this and, and I look for business opportunities along that road. But you have heard uh, other business leaders saying that there is no such existence between carbon dioxide and, and climate change. And you have to judge us and it will have an impact on them as well because when they look for business opportunities they will look elsewhere. Uh, I think we can address the situation and I think we're all, uh, along the right road but I think we lack a few insights and we still don't have all the insights. I think one mistake that we have done when talking about climate change is that we are excluding the possibilities of the forest and especially to store carbon dioxide. We regard the forest as carbon dioxide neutral and therefore hence we look for it as a free resource also in the energy sector. That's why we so readily include bio uh, energy into the climate change solution. But according to the Kyoto Treaty, we're actually allowed to include the possibilities of the forest inside when we do this, but Europe has chosen not to do this. And if you look at the targets in Europe in 2020, that 20% should be renewable, a lot of that has to be bioenergy. Uh, and I will try to reason with you why I think it should be included, because that's where the opportunities are, and it, it will set us in a slightly different direction. And, and as many of you know, a lot of the man-made carbon dioxide entered into the atmosphere every year is from deforestation. We have a global deforestation, and we are deforestation at the rate of 0.2%, which we have done for the last 50 years. And that accounts for 20% of the carbon dioxide put into the atmosphere. And here, still, we regard this as neutral, so we don't see this. Uh, and I think that it is leading us in the wrong direction. So on a global basis, deforestation means that the forest is not neutral, it's negative. So the first thing we should do is stop deforestation. That's a controversy in itself, I don't understand why, but it's, it is regarded as a free resource for, for many countries, of course. This was achieved in Copenhagen. It was the, the environmental conference in Copenhagen was regarded as a failure, but it achieved one thing, and that was red initiative red light, various kinds of red, and that has to do with the forest ability to store carbon dioxide. Today you find it hard not to see a, a royalty or a rock star uh, claiming that we should stop deforestation. So there is a lot of positive things in that direction, but we need means to monitor the deforestation, and I think there is a lot of things happening there as well. But if we really want to do something really fast about climate change, we should stop deforestation. And, and it shouldn't be a controversy in itself. And, and if we regard it as neutral, we do stupid things. It is very easy to, to deforest one hectare in Southeast Asia, emitting up to 1,500 tons of carbon dioxide when you burn this forest. And to plant, for instance, palm tree plantation, send it to Finland, do biodiesel, and replace and save possibly 10 tons a year. It takes 150 years to restore that carbon dioxide balance. But it can be done if we regard the forest as carbon dioxide neutral. Now, if only 0.2% of the forest is deforested every year, and it accounts for 20%, of the emitted carbon dioxide. Mathematically, if we could grow forests at the rate of 0.8% on a yearly basis, we would use every other CO2 in the photosynthesis in building forests. 
Well, we produce one cubic meter of forest. We need water, sunshine, and carbon dioxide. And to do one cubic meter, we need roughly about one ton of carbon dioxide. So theoretically, if we could build forest at the rate of 0.0%, we wouldn't have a problem. We would take care of all the emitted carbon dioxide. So is that possible? Can it be done? It's been done in this country for the last 150 years. Is there a controversy in reforestation? Of course there is, especially in this country. We will talk about biodiversity, but we are already doing our slice of this action. Can it be done elsewhere? Of course it can. Do we need more land to, to achieve this? No. We can prove that you need only a part of the production forest. You need to densify the forest. And there will be controversies around that because people will claim that this is against biodiversity. The biggest controversy in Sweden when we plant forests is that the blueberries, there are less blueberries. Um, 1% of the blueberries in Sweden are harvested, and 99% are rotten. But that's a controversy we face here. We don't face it elsewhere. And what do we do in Sweden differently compared to other countries who plant forest? We have nurseries and we have plantation. 90% of the growth in Sweden is because we plant trees. If you look at Sweden's carbon dioxide total equation, we have a gross growth every year of about 100 million cubic meter of forest in this country. How much carbon dioxide do we need for that? We need about twice as what we emit. We need about 100 million tons of carbon dioxide for the photosynthesis in the forest here. And we only emit about 46 million tons totally. So we import carbon dioxide to grow our forest. The same thing is happening in Finland, Norway. And we want more countries to plant more trees. So if you stop deforestation and if you plant trees, you can take care of all the emitted carbon dioxide. Is that good enough? Well, in Europe, 2020, 20%. We, in the year 2020, we're supposed to have 20% renewable energy in Europe. Uh, Sweden is supposed to go from 40 to 50. I think we have achieved that already this year. Uh, UK is going from 1% to 15% renewable energy. So what's their options? Well, they will have some additional wind power, very little water electricity. The majority and the bulk of that has to be bioenergy in one way or the other. And if Europe is doing 2020 targets, all of us, all countries meet their targets, and we should only use European trees, our own forests, to fulfill that bio target, the old trees in Europe will be gone in less than 10 years. That's how big that target is. So there will be a lot of import to meet these targets. Is there an alternative way to go for example for example, for the UK, if they are to go from 1% to 15% renewable. A lot of this today is speculated on will be on imported biopellets from the US. There are biopellets factories being built just to target the UK market. 30% of the energy in UK is used to, to regulate indoor temperatures in poorly insulated houses they should insulate their houses instead. And most of you have been in a house in, in the UK and you, you have seen the potential. So if they, instead of doing their 15% renewable target, focus on insulation, they will reduce, I'm positive, their need for indoor regulation energy by 50%. Almost all is direct radiated electric, electric heating today. And solve the problem once and for all, rather than import renewable energy for the next 100 years. And when we look at our, our business opportunities in this area, we put very little, our company put very little in the energy side. We think that we can do much more 
in material substitution in other areas. If I have a cubic meter of wood in my company and I want to do something about climate change, the best I can do with that is not to burn it and to produce electricity or hot water or something. The best I can do from a climate change perspective is to build a wooden house and replacing a concrete alternative. That is three times as much carbon dioxide friendly than doing, for instance, biofuel out of a cubic meter of wood. Still, Brussels tells us that we should, till 2020, 20, focus on energy side. This is a very costly exercise extremely costly. What I say is that we should build wooden frame houses, again, replacing concrete ones. We should do that in China, we should do that in India, we should do that in Europe. Europe is a concrete housing market. But also we should make houses that has zero need for energy for heating. We know that technology since 20 years ago. The problem is that we can only build ugly houses with that technology. So we need to build beautiful looking houses with this technology. And that's, that, I think, is happening. And, and this is what we want to do, and this is the direction we want to go. So then looking for business opportunities, what else can I do with my cellulose but energy? One of those options that I see is to make, for instance, clothing. Replacing synthetic fiber and replacing ecologically, catastrophically cultivated cotton with bio cellulose. That's where we see the option. Only 1% of clothing today is made out of uh, cellulose. 1%. And I think we can do at least 10% over the next 20 years with the re renewable, sustainably kept certified forestry with a product that is also biodegradable. And biodegradable <coughs> is where we is the buzzword for us when we look for business opportunities. Car industry is have a very high pressure from their consumer from time to time. There is a lot of positive technology breakthroughs in, in the battery side for the car industry. Car industry claim that 97% of their material is recycled. The bulk of that is recycled as concrete filling. Whether or not that is a recycling, I don't know. But they need to be more and higher level of biodegradable percentage in their cars. They should use more cellulose, lignin, in their cars. And that can be done. We can do the tires for them. We can do part of their engines with a cellulose molecule. And they should increase their biodegradability of their cars by up to 50% with existing te technology. BMW is looking at, at this. Toyota is looking at this. But it has to be biodegradable. And this is just a small uh, issue which is lurking behind the, or the next drama, which is uh, some would argue that the climate change is already out of fashion. We haven't solved the problem. But if I had been here three years ago, that maybe there would have been a full house here. But the, the big drama that is lurking behind the climate change, which I think we will sort out by planting trees, is the sustainability issues. And there is a combination here. If you do the right thing in the climate change, you will also do certainly the right thing in the sustainability issues. You could read the Max Planck University three weeks ago announced that in order to be sustainable, we should only be three billion people. And, and they left it there. And, and the sustainability issues is, is also, if I see climate change positive, if I see sustainability, then I know that we are on the right way. And for the paper and pulp industry, it's about finding new products, replacing fossil-based products. We call that going from fossil to photosynthesis, pho to pho. And, and that's where we should look. And I say that even though we're the biggest producer of green energy in Sweden, we produce 15% of the green electricity. We put money into windmill. We, together with the Stadkraft of Norway, we build in southern parts of Sweden not without protests, uh, and we produce energy at our uh, recovery boilers uh, up to about two terawatt hours per year, but we don't put research there. We put the research where the material substitution will come in the future. That's what I have to say about business opportunities. I have no idea what the time is, but I'm supposed to take some questions, sir. 
So please.